every step I take, I take in you. You are my way, Jesus. Every breath I take, I breathe in you. Come on, waves of mercy. Oh! 
my hands higher than before. Come on and lift your hands. I want to love a little more than before. Come on, love somebody today. I want to worship a little deeper than before. We worship you, Jesus. I can shout a little louder than Good morning, everybody. Man, I'll tell you what, this is fun. Um, tuning in. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Uh, what I was trying to say, it's fun, man, uh, worshiping the Lord with Juan and Nelly. Boy, we're going to do one more, but before we do, I just wanted to come on and welcome everybody. Praise God, we're so good. Uh, so good. <laughs> It is so good to have you here with us today and uh, for joining us. Let's say a word of prayer and then we're going to come back with one more song. And some of you, as you're watching the announcements, you've seen that we announced that uh, we're going to be doing an Easter, Easter celebration, resurrection, power. Uh, we're going to be diving into celebrating the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ as we know as Easter. Amen. You know, sometimes we have, um, uh, I don't know, somehow we associated eggs with Easter. And sometimes I used to say, man, the only egg uh, involved in that was that we were eggheads and we needed God and we came to the Lord and now we're celebrating Easter. Amen. Let's pray, and then we're going to come back with one more worship song. Man, it is fun to worship the Lord with uh, Nelly and Juan. Juanito, gracias, gracias, hermano del Paso. I think El Paso, I don't know. No, I don't know where. But praise God, let's pray. You know, I know many of you that are tuning in. Good morning to all of you. Of course, I've been trying to post some of this um, as you see right now, it's coming on the screen, just trying to post a little bit of uh, this and a little bit of that. So good morning to everybody. So thank you for joining us today. 
and uh, for tuning in. I want to say a word of prayer, so let's stick with me just for this uh, first hour, this hour. So let's pray, post your prayer requests, and I encourage each and every one of our brothers and sisters to uh, share this uh, and then go back and look at the prayer requests um, and pray one for another. That's part of what we're, our responsibility is to pray one for another, to lift up each other in prayer before God. So I encourage you to share this, go back to this um, podcast or this um, live feed. And we're also on YouTube. But go back to it and go over the prayer requests and let's lift, let's lift each other up in prayer. Let's lift each other up before the presence of Almighty God. So let's say a word of prayer. Father, today, Lord, I'm praying for each and every person, everyone that is tuning in. Father, I speak the blessing of Almighty God. Father, as we unite our hearts together, our faith in one accord, believing that Jesus is Lord, that you were raised from the dead in power and authority. Lord, in that name, this above every name, Lord, that matchless name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who, Lord, came as the manifest Son of God, God clothed himself and came into this world and gave us the image of God. Jesus said, when you see me, you see the Father, and I only speak those things that I hear him speak. And Lord, so you were reflecting into this broken uh, world, fallen world. You were speaking life, uh, deliverance. And so, Father, we thank you that Jesus came, showed compassion, showed mercy, showed forgiveness and redemption. And so, Father, right now we believe that Jesus rose from the dead. And in that name, I ask, Lord, that you would bless everyone watching. And Lord, I come against every foul, wicked, evil, lying, tormenting, deceiving, unclean spirit, Lord, that would they would rise up against our minds and our thoughts and would try to bring confusion and disorder. And Lord, I speak the order of God, the blessing of God upon each and every one of you watching and tuning in now. And also for those of you that have lost loved ones, we pray the comfort of God upon you. Nora, I know that recently um, you guys as a family have uh, been celebrating uh, Jenny's birthday and uh, you know it's been a year ago she passed away and many of you out there today but we pray that the Lord will comfort you by the power of resurrection boy I'll tell you it's going to be a, um, in 1994 March 24th I believe it was my mom passed away over 20 years ago I believe something like that somebody do the math for me but man, one of the things that I find comfort, and even my dad, almost um, over 45, almost 50, oh my God, almost 50 years ago, that he passed away. But I still look forward to seeing them. Praise God, I remember the day that my mom opened her heart to Jesus. She came out to San Francisco um, and she was there visiting and she sat in one of our New Life Faith Center services in San Francisco. And man, I, I remember when I gave the uh, invitation for people to come to open their hearts to Jesus, my mom walked up. Later on when we were eating, she said, boy, Rudy, you sure talk a lot. <laughs> and then she said, where'd you learn how to talk like that? Well, we I got to tell you, I'm one of those, just like the gospel says, that they looked and they seen that they were ignorant and unlearned men, but they took knowledge that they had been with Jesus. So I said all that to bless you in the name of Jesus. Let's go back one more song. Get ready to worship with Juan and Nelly. They got one more song for us here today. So welcome, welcome, welcome everybody. And thank you for tuning in. And I'm going to keep on uh, posting some of these um, uh, comments as... Um, and now taking control. Here we go. One more, 
worship song with um, Juan and Nelly. Here we go. Open your hearts, lift your hands, lift them up to Jesus and worship the Lord. Uh, powerful, powerful worship, and um, I just love that. Thank you once again, Juan and Nelly, 
for leading us in the worship. We really appreciate it. Hey, God bless everybody. Father, I just pray today, Father, that um, Lord, speak to us. And Lord, when I say speak to us, Lord, I mean like take your word. And Lord, let it come forth as revelation, knowledge, transformative knowledge. Lord, that is able to renew the very, the very fabric of our being. It is able to renew our thought processes so that when we go through things and we're facing things and we feel like we're at the end of our ropes, the word of the Lord comes forth and speaks and gives command and gives direction. I ask the Lord God today that your word would come forth, not only impacting our minds and altering our thought processes, but Lord, that our spirit being, Lord, the image of God and the likeness of God that you created us to be, I ask, Lord, that it will be reinforced. And thank you, Lord God, that, <laughs> Lord, that you laid out the framework, Father, for our very existence. So I pray, Father, give us hearing ears, give us seeing eyes, and open up to us the word of the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, and everybody said amen and amen. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in again, like I said earlier. So we've been talking about the image of Christ or the image of God. And, um, and I'm almost done with my coffee. So we've been talking about it. It's been, we, I think we've been on this for three weeks. And I don't know about you, but uh, I know this much that um, sometimes when we go into uh, series or we're going over different series, I know that sometimes what happens is that, um, you know, we get, uh, well, I don't want to say we get tired of um, a series, but sometimes, you know, it'll, it'll begin to like, oh man, I already heard that. He already spoke on that last week and, you know, stuff like that uh, and everything. <laughs> but, you know, I got to tell you that, you know, I, I know that sometimes it's easy to get these preconceived notions of what the Lord is saying to us, especially when you go into uh, series. So we've been talking about the image the likeness of God, how that you and I are being created in the very image and in the very likeness. So that not only do we reflect that image that when he made man from the dust, from the dirt, and he shaped and he formed man, but that he also breathed into him the breath of life and man became a living soul. So in this um, series what we've seen was that there was there was such a blessing that was put on humanity the human race was to be blessed and lack nothing the humanity as uh, as we know it well as we know it we only know it as fallen humanity if you will we only know it as broken humanity but in the beginning it wasn't so and uh, what we've seen so far was that how that the human race, the human being, humanity, only had one responsibility, be fruitful, multiply, take dominion over uh, the earth, replenish it, multiply. And then they could eat of every fruit of the tree of the, uh, that was in the garden except for one, and that was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And I believe that God never intended the human race to partake or take in and eat of this evil because as soon as it, they did, the image, the likeness of God in us was corrupt. 
all of a sudden there was a brokenness. God said in the day that you eat of it, you know, you know, of course it, man, don't eat of it. Why? Because man, you just don't want nothing to do with evil, but they did it and they fell. They separated. And so the result of that was what? The result of that was that we see humanity all of a sudden for the first time hiding from God. All of a sudden for the first time the human race is hiding from God. And so what happened? They heard God walking in the cool of the day in the garden. And what happened? They ran and they hid themselves. That was a result because why? When they took of the fruit and they did eat and Adam also ate, what? All of a sudden they realized they were naked. They had no more covering. Somehow this wickedness, all of a sudden it, it um, altered. It changed their outlook. It changed their perspective as they begin to look at things in life. Everything changed. Now, for the first time, God is out of the picture. You say, well, Rudy, how, how do you know that, man? You weren't there. Well, the way that I know that is because historically speaking, from the writings of beginnings, Genesis, the book itself is named Genesis, meaning beginnings, origins, beginnings, from the very beginning. So what do we see in that? Is that the human race was to be in fellowship with God, walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And so what took place was for the first time, and I know this may sound repetitious, but for the first time, they're hiding from God. They're running from the presence of God. How many of us have run and hid? And man, I, I, you know, I got to say that I'm, I, I was good at running and hiding from the Lord. Maybe I still do. Who knows, you know? Maybe we still do. But listen to this. Um, and the perspective, the, all of a sudden, wickedness was in, introduced. Evil was introduced. So what happened? The image, the likeness of God in humanity, not in God, but in humanity for the first time was corrupt. The image, the likeness of God was corrupt. What do you mean corrupt? Let's take a moment, just talk about that before I read scripture here, because we have to understand this, that in that corruptness, all of a sudden, within that corruption, our perception is altered, we're hiding from God, we're running from God, and now all of a sudden, we know that, um, you know, that... We, we really don't want anything to do with God. We, we're hiding. We're, we're running. Uh, there's a nakedness. There's something lacking, something missing. And so we know that within that process of running, hiding, something missing, what do we see? We see that we got corrupt. Let's write this scripture down. And I'm going to uh, try to post it here also. Let me see if I can. And um, let's see. Let's see if I'm able to do it. But let, write the scripture down. Genesis 3.19. After wickedness, evil was introduced, was um, all of a sudden, evil, wickedness becomes a part of humanity. And now for the first time that everything's flipped, everything's upside down. Now there's a separation between the human race and God. Genesis 3.19, this is the scripture I was going to tell you to um, uh, read and listen. And I'm going to see if I could post it on here. Here we go. Boink. Hey, there it is. Now for the first time, listen to this. Genesis 3.19, I'm going to try to put it up here. So that you could see it. There you go. Let's see. Let me stretch this out. All right. I know some of you don't want my face hidden. But listen to this. Genesis 3.19. By the sweat of your face you shall eat bread. Till you return to the ground. For out of it you were taken. 
for you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Back to the dust you go, <laughs> man. You know, last week I read a scripture in the uh, book of Corinthians, and I'm, I want you to go or write it down, wrote it down. <laughs> First Corinthians 15, 49. Uh, and I'm going to post this also. Let's see if I can do this. I mean, here we go. Boink. There it is. Boom. There it is. And listen to what 1 Corinthians 15, 49 and 50. We know that in Genesis 3, 19, the scripture that I read, he's saying to him, thus you shall go back to Boy, you have fallen, you have fallen from grace, you have fallen from the intent, the purpose of God in your life. God intended to bless you, to empower you, to give you authority, to dwell in a place where you would live in fellowship with the Almighty God all the days of your life, ruling, having dominion, power, but because you took and ate of the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil, thus you shall return to, you are dustly, you are earthly. Now for the first time, you are back to earthly, earthliness, fleshliness, separation from God. And so the reason that Genesis is important because this is going back to the origin, the beginning, giving us a description of what took place and what God is trying to do. 1 Corinthians 15, 49 and 50 says, Just as we have borne the image of the man of dust. Remember Genesis 3, 19. Um, that, you know, from the sweat of your brow now for the first time, there's a curse, if you will. Now you're, the whole dynamics of man kind have changed have shifted and you are lost you are hidden you're looking at yourself and you find shame nakedness and shame disobedience and all these other things that are now working in you and so now uh, we get a glimpse and we get a look into first corinthians when paul's writing to the corinthian church He's, he's and in 1 Corinthians 15, he's just reminding them that just as you have bore the image of the man of dust, listen to this, we shall also bear the image of the man of heaven. So when you read scriptures like this, you have to look at this and, um, and think of the beginning, image, likeness of God, and then boom, Genesis 3.19 says you're going back to dust, to the dirt. Now, you know, God originally intended you to live on, live on the earth. He was, his plan was to like, man, you live in the presence of God and fellowship with God and rule, master the earth. And instead what happens, and I know it's repetitious, but I think we gain more through that in hopes that through that repetition that God will give us information, give us a download into our spirit, into our mind, which helps us as we're facing life and going through life. We do it by faith. We do it with hope. We do it with a great expectation of a greater outcome. Why? Because God is with us. God is for us, and he ordained for us to reclaim, to be restored to that very purpose from the beginning. 1 Corinthians 15, uh, 50 says, I tell you this, brothers, brothers and my sisters that are watching. Oh, by the way, Tony, Laura, uh, Victor, Alicia, I know you guys are out there camping, hopefully you camping out there and listening <laughs> god bless you guys everybody on here god bless you but listen to verse 50 i tell you this my brothers and sisters, flesh and blood shall cannot inherit the kingdom of god nor does the perishable inherit the in 
imperishable. That's why I want you to come back to this, and, and that's why I, it, this is, I'm giving you solid teaching from the word of the Lord. Solid teaching is reflected in themes throughout the Bible that you can see a theme from Genesis to Revelation. And you can see it woven, if you will, I guess woven, the thread, the common thread of what God is doing within from the old to the new. And that's why it's so important for us to be able to, you know, understand that because, man, I tell you, I hear people just preaching and teaching all kinds of stuff. And it's just, I can take one verse and just, wow, you know, and then boom, make a big old doctrine out of it. Genesis, talking about the image, the likeness. Genesis, talking about separation, falling from God. Why? The corrupted humanity. Back to the dust you will go. Back to that. What did he say in Genesis 3.19 as we read that already? By the sweat of your face you shall eat bread. Man, that, that tells me that, man, the, the, the toil, the toiling, the, the hardness of life and all this. He says, how you return to the ground for out of it you were taken. For you are dust and to dust you shall return. But 1 Corinthians begins to tell us, uh, praise God, 1 Corinthians 15, like I read earlier, that that we bore that image of the man of dust, Genesis 3.19 or Genesis 1.26. But you will also bear the image of the man of heaven. Who is the man of heaven? When you read scriptures like this, who is that man of heaven? Jesus Christ, who came from heaven to this earth, through the virgin birth. And um, he came from heaven, and guess what? He went back to heaven. But before he went back to heaven, what happened? He, he was clothed in human flesh, was loved by a mama and a dad, and for those of you that didn't know this, he had other brothers and sisters. Now that's a whopper. I know that's a whopper because there's so many out there that don't even know that Jesus had other brothers and sisters. Step is a step. Meaning like, you know, they were born because of, um, they came into this earth because of Joseph coming together with Mary after the birth of Jesus. Jesus was their older brother, stepbrother, right? They have different fathers. But see, you don't hear this. You don't know this stuff. So I'm, I'm not saying you don't know this stuff, but you don't think about these kind of things. But that is the flat-out truth that is biblical. And so let's move forward here. So he tells us that just like we bore the image of the man of dust, that we're going to also bear the image of the man of heaven. So when Jesus died, you know, after he came, he lived this earth, he's showing us the mercy of God, he's forgiving people that are marginalized, people that are, uh, you know, man, I'll tell you, uh, rejected, People that are not welcome into the community of faith, you know, as it related to the scribes, the Pharisees, temple worship, all of that. It was huge because now for the first time, let me see what time it is. Now for the first time, Jesus is embracing. Jesus is healing. Jesus is forgiving prostitutes. Jesus is healing the mentally insane. Jesus is delivering people from demonic powers, breaking the powers of darkness over their lives and giving them the compassion.
compassion, the mercy, the freedom that comes in the Lord. And so what is so powerful about that is that we see the man of heaven, that he's there moving in the dynamic, powerful, moving uh, compassion of God. What we see Jesus doing in the New Testament is reflective of the plan of God. Someone says, well, Rudy, is it the will of God to heal me? Is it the will of God for me to have a sane mind, you know, to have a clear mind? Is that yes? And yes, and a double yay. It is. It is the will of God. Because the man of heaven clothed himself in flesh. In, in, he came, the man of heaven, what was the entryway for the man of heaven was? The womb of a mother. The womb of Mary. And then, boom, as a child, he experienced it. And what do we see Jesus doing at 12 years old? By the time he's 12, man, he's, he's astounding the religious leaders of his day. He's blowing their minds by the things he's saying, the things that he's answering. He's just blowing them their minds. The other day, we did a... Uh, you know, through some of the stuff I do, we did a, um, um, a Zoom session, and I hope to do a do Zoom session with you guys on here soon. But we did a, a Zoom session. I had a 12-year-old kid. Because, you know, I got other youth and teenagers. But a 12-year-old kid, you know what he said? Stay in school. And, and he began to give us wisdom. I said, dude, you just laid on us some wisdom some insight. I said, dude, I wish I had your attitude. Here he was, a 12-year-old, this 12-year-old kid that I'm doing this. It's a group session, but this 12-year-old kid is dropping nuggets, wisdom. Like, I, I, as I'm listening to him, I'm telling the, I, I told the kid, I go, dude, uh, man, I, I just wish I had a little bit of wisdom that you have, and I would have graduated. Hey, hey, don't worry, don't worry. Uh, I became, um, well, I'm not, I went back and got my uh, GED and all that kind of stuff, and I went to Bible school, and I've been a lifelong learner now for over 40 years, 40, 78, who knows, man, what, 78, 88, 98, 2008, 2018, 19, 20, 20 23 years now. For 23 years, I've been a, a, a student of God's word. But you know what I, I've been doing, man? I, I tell you that God has been uh, breaking down just my preconceived ideas, stuff that I've heard people say out of context and all this stuff. Now, my point was this, that Jesus, at the age of 12 was already blowing people's minds away hey good morning javier up there in the bay god bless for those of you that don't know javier when annette and i started the church in san francisco javier's um he was he was a youngster he was young and he's the, one of the he's the guy that we took with us but back to what jesus did you need to understand that at 12 years old, because what, what am I talking about? I'm talking about from 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 15, 49. What did he say? Jesus, just as we have bore the image of the man of dust, the image of the man of dust, we shall also bear the image of the man of heaven. I'm on the topic of the man of heaven. So let's stay focused, the man of heaven. I'm talking about dust. I'm talking about image. I'm talking about likeness. In Genesis 3.19, God said, back to the dust you return, back to that your fallen, corrupted image now has separated you. Now you're in fear. You're hiding from God. You're running from God. And God had to make coverings for their flesh 
God, for the first time, I, I think that we see a picture of redemption by God taking skins, animal skins, and clothing them is a reflection of redemption. It's a, it's, it's a foreshadow of what the Lord intends to do. The, the plan is, how is he going to restore this image and likeness of man back from the beginning, Genesis? And we get a little glimpse in 1 Corinthians 15, 49, that just as we bore the image of the man of dust, we'll also bear the image of the man of heaven. So I've been talking to you about the man of heaven. The man of heaven, who was in the presence of the Father, came into this earth, and the dynamic of what we've seen him by 12 years old, he was preaching, teaching. Well, he was already, well, this, he, hadn't, he, he couldn't go into the ministry yet. Why? Because you have to be 30 years old. If you know the culture of the day and when they would start ministry, that's why when I say people take things out of context, this, that, they always forget the contextual cultural dynamic that applies to the Word of God. It is critical for us to understand the culture, the contextual, the context, and within the culture of that, and as they, how they perceived it as he was speaking it out. All of a sudden, we Americanized it, we Westernized it, and all that stuff, and we forgot all about the context, we forgot all about the culture, and boom, we just make it whatever we want. All right, <laughs> there, I got it off my chip. I got the chip off my shoulder. Boom, boom, boom. Lucianne, God bless you, Lucianne. So back to this, and let me uh, hurry up here. It's not like you're stopping me, but all right, let me close off. I want to uh, go back here because it's so important. Now let's go to um, Colossians because one of the things I said was the man of heaven, was Jesus started as a, a seed in the womb, was birthed as a baby, and as we follow him, boom, the next time we see him in scripture, as his mother is pregnant, and as Joseph, as they're facing all these challenges, they're trying to protect them, they're warned divinely to leave town, move, and all that. Why? Because um, there's a decree given, I believe, by Herod and um, to kill this baby. And that's one of the things we always see, that it seems like something's always in opposition to what God is trying to do. You're out there today, and I can tell you that there's always going to be opposition to kill, to destroy, to separate you from that which the Lord is doing. And I know I could quote all kinds of scripture for this purpose. The Son of God was manifested to destroy the works of the devil. Uh, we could go into, you know, Jesus, Luke 19, you know, epistle to the gospel, um, which we should actually go gospel to the epistle because gospel gives us the power of God, Jesus in action, the moving of the intent of the plan of God. And then to the epistles, the revelation, the insight, the understanding of what that all uh, means to us as Jesus did it. Amen. So the man of heaven. So we know that the man of heaven, the next time we see him from 12 years old, you see him being baptized by John and coming and John saying, hey, you came to me to be baptized. Hey, I'm not worthy to bow, you know, to undo your shoes. I'm, I'm not uh, worthy and all this stuff. And um, what happens? He says, hey, I got to fulfill all righteousness. So Jesus is baptized. Boom. What do we see? Jesus is baptized. We see the heavens open. Uh, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. The spirit of God descends on him in the form of a dove. And boom, immediately. He's taken into the wilderness by, uh, the, by the Spirit. The Spirit takes him into the wilderness to do what? To combat Genesis, going back to Genesis, to, to uh, confront the evil that started in Genesis 3. That same temptation when the evil one came, 
and said, hey, God knows the day that you eat of this fruit, you'll become like him, knowing good and evil. But now in the Matthew chapter 4, instead, now we see this for 40 days and 40 nights, this battle, this confrontation. When you think about what happened in the garden, it does not tell us how long from the creation of time to the time that they took of the fruit. It doesn't tell us how long. A lot of times when we read it, we think that God made man, put them there in the garden, and uh, boom, all of a sudden the temptation comes, and they boom, they fell overnight. We don't know. It's not written. It doesn't tell us. We our preconceived notions, our preconceived ideas tell us, right? Luke uh, 240, thank you, Javier. The child grew and waxed strong in spirit, and he was filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. Now, understand this, the child, he was a child. That's the only insight they're giving us into Jesus, the time he was born till he was 12. Some of these scriptures are just telling us the dynamic of what was happening with Jesus. He was growing, he was getting strong in spirit, he was being filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. So now at 12 years old, boom. And I think that scripture in Luke 2.40 could also represent or reflect um, not only um, the child growing up to 12, but I think 12 to 30 years old in his teenage so I am talking today about the image of the man of dust and the image of the man of heaven. Now, let's move forward because um, one of the things is that's so important is Colossians 1, 12, uh, through, uh, verses 1 and 12, and then I'm going to jump around. Uh, Genesis 1, 12 says, Giving thanks to the Father, who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. Verse 13, Colossians 1, 13. I, uh, you know, we love this verse, right? I love this verse. He has delivered us from the domain of darkness. Here's the new image. The, the likeness, the image being restored back into the human race. He has delivered us from the domain of darkness, transferred us into the kingdom of his dear son, verse 14, Colossians 1, 14, in whom we have redemption. We have redemption. First of all, let's keep it in that contextual order. Redemption comes first. Why? Because he has to redeem us first. In order to partake in this, um, uh, you know, blessing of God, in this new image redemption he has to redeem us he has to reclaim us and now he is restoring us in whom verse 14 colossians 1 14 in whom we have redemption the forgiveness of sins oh beloved stop hiding stop living in shame i know sometimes we look at ourselves oh i'm so simple da, da, da. well not anymore you are the righteousness of god he has redeemed you. He has forgiven you. You need to lift your head up high and know that he has uh, redeemed and he has reclaimed you. And I'm running out of time. In whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sin. You know, sometimes I, I hear people so sin conscious. Oh my God, I missed them. Oh God, God forgive us. God forgive us. Oh my God, he does forgive us, but... You know, it's it's not like, um, you know, I always hear people, you got to get right with God. Yes, yes, we got to get right with God. But the work of Jesus Christ, his redemption is sufficient. His forgiveness is sufficient. The grace of God is sufficient. Now listen to this, uh, 1 Corinthians 1, 15, and listen to what he says. He says that he is the invisible he is the image talking about jesus the man of heaven he is the image of the invisible god 
the firstborn of all creation. He is the very image, all right? So today as I close off, I remind you of um, the book of Romans. Let me put this here. Uh, let me see if I could um, put this verse on there for you guys. And um, man, because this is, um, this is, this is good. This is very um, powerful verses of scripture because I believe that in 1 Corinthians, he's, he's reflecting back to Genesis. In the epistles here, and that was in the epistles, and even in, in Corinthians, or I'm sorry, yeah, 1 Corinthians that we read already, but even in, in this verse that I just shared with you that I th I'm throwing up there right now, I want us to uh, close off with this um, thought in mind, and I read this to you last week, Romans 8.29. ESV says, For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son. Those he foreknew, he predestined to be conformed to the image of of his son. Now, one of the things that I see in here is, and keeping it in the contextual scriptures uh, theme that we are talking about, and there it is, I put it up there for you, uh, in Col uh, Romans 8, 29, that he uh, predestined for us to be now that fallen image, the image of man, the likeness of God that was corrupt, now is being restored. How? And there it is, Romans 8, 29. Beloved, you've been restored. For he, whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image. Now we are back to the image of his son in order that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Amen. So I just want to uh, bless you as we close off and just to say to you that, man, what a powerful, powerful thing it is that he has restored us. Colossians 3.10, this is the uh, last uh, few scriptures that I'll share with you as we close off. But listen to this and uh, here we go. And I'm going to close off with this last scripture, I believe. <laughs> and here we go. Here it is. Are you ready? Are you ready to rumble? Here we go. And I'm pasting. Sorry, sorry, buddy. But I just pasted it back on there for you so that you can see it. And man, it's a whole lot of scripture. It's going to block my whole face here. Who cares, right? Colossians 3.10 as I close off here today. Let me read it to you. Put on the new self, which is being renewed in the knowledge after the image of the creator. Put on is what he's saying to us. And I'm going to go ahead and just put the one verse because, um, you know, I gave you a whole, a whole lot of verse up in there. But here we go. Let me post it for you. As I close off today, beloved, I want to remind you that the epistles, the insight, what are the epistles? It is for the believer to give us more insight into what the Lord has done. What does he say to us? Put on the new self, which is being. It is being renewed in knowledge after the image Man, I can't repeat that enough. Let that soak in revelation, knowledge. This is being uh, renewed. This new self is being renewed in the knowledge after the image of the creator. Then in verse 12, well, he also tells them in verse 11 how there's no, no longer Greek and Jew, uncircumcised and circumcised, barbarian, a slave or free. And then he tells us in verse 11, because Christ is in all and in all. And then he says, 
verse 12. Now he tells us, uh, here we go. Let me copy this for you and put it in there. And this is the last verse, I promise, as we have run out of time. And here it is. Boom. There it is. Boom. There it is. And I'm going to put that up there. Here we go. What is Corinthians? I'm sorry, not Corinthians. Colossians 1.12 say, put on then as God's chosen one. Those of you that are bearing the image and the likeness of God now, what does he say in Colossians 1.12? Put on then as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, patience, bearing with one another, and if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other as the Lord has forgiven you, so you must also do. And then in verse 14, he says, above all these things, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And I'm going to go ahead and put this verse up there for you also, uh, because this is so powerful of a verse. And thank you for holding on. I know some of you checking out can't hang. Too much Bible, huh? <laughs> I'm only kidding. Don't get mad. No, no, go ahead and get mad. That way you can forgive. <laughs> but listen to this. Uh, verse 14, 15, what did he say? Above all these things, now he says, not only put on the new self, but put on then as God's chosen, holy, beloved, compassionate, and gives you all the likeness of God that you're putting on. And then in verse 14, above all these, now you're putting on love. Why? Because this love binds, it brings everything together in perfect harmony. There is a, a perfect balance that when we understand the image of what he began and the image that he's imparting to the image of the man of heaven. And what does he tell us? Put on love because this binds everything together in perfect harmony. Don't you love it when everything's in perfect harmony? You know, your mind, your body, and you're bringing everything into perfect harmony. I'm staying on this image. Uh, thank you for sharing these verses, everybody. The ones you're, But I'm trying to stay on this theme. On this image, when we put on that image and likeness, what is the likeness of God? Compassionate, merciful, forgiving, understanding, powerful. There's this perfect harmony. Now he tells us, verse 15, and let the peace of Christ rule in your heart to which indeed you were called in one body. And what does he say? Be thankful. Then we see Jesus always being thankful. Last verse, I promise. Yeah, maybe I lied. Huh? <laughs> Last verse, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly teaching we don't see i don't hear enough teaching everybody wants to be a preacher teaching the 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 word of christ really comes uh richly in teaching and admonishing one another how in all wisdom man because you got people rebuking admonishing but no wisdom trust me on that one and then he says the way that we, we, what it brings out and what it creates, singing psalms, hymns, spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. Amen. I close off with that. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. I'm going to play one last tune for you. I love this song. It's uh, Juan Rios, um, Nelly, Gamboa. Oh, hey, in case you didn't know, they are... Uh, what do you call it? Engaged. And the Gomez. Uh, Father, I, I bless everyone watching, Lord. Let the word of God dwell in each and everyone in all wisdom, 
in all insight understanding thank you lord from the for the man of heaven just as we've partaken of the man of the earth we're now lord partaking of the man of heaven who came reflecting the image and restoring us back to the image and the likeness of god we thank you now and if you haven't confess receive christ into your life do it now he rose from the dead. He's alive forevermore. Be blessed in Jesus' name. And don't forget, hey, I got forgot to tell you that um, I heard from Reuben, who is um, Lilo's son. Uh, looks like they want to do something April the 10th. Um, I'm not sure where he's going to do it, but we do plan to do a service, memorial service for our brother Lilo. And we'll be doing that at, um, at Las Palmas Park. The Las Palmas Park, I'm not sure what day yet. We're probably going to do it uh, right after um, Ruben does the service there for his, um, at his house. All right, let's, uh, God bless you all. Here's one last song. Don't leave. I think you're going to like this song. All right, here we go. I love this song. I just love it. Here we go. God bless you all.
Praise you, Jesus.